at Home, a web series dedicated to keeping the North Folk connected. In this episode, we'll be learning about shield strapping from Sir Elfwyn, talk bees with the Honorable Lord Joffer, hear a song by Lady Widow Kate of the Lake, see the Honorable Lady Emilos cooking skills, and more. Here's a rundown of some of the goings-on in the kingdom since our last episode. On June 10th, Lord Owen organized a brewing roundtable, and he joins us now to tell us how it went. Greetings, Eldermere. I'm Owen from the Brewers Guild, mundanely known as John. I'm just going to take a couple moments of your time to discuss the Zoom meeting that the Brewers Guild held on June 10th. It was a roundtable, and we decided to meet to discuss the many aspects of brewing. We were joined by Arwen and Jessup from Avocal, and they brought forth lots of great questions, as well as a great deal of expertise to our Zoom chat. His Majesty Britannicus had some thoughts that I'm currently brewing up into a plan, which I'll hopefully be able to present in the next few weeks. Some of the topics that we discussed were beginner starting points. Where does a beginning brewer start out? what kind of equipment they would need. And we kind of came to a consensus that beer is a good way to go because our mundane friends may not understand the, uh, the concept and the love of mead. So beer is a good way to get everyone to climb in on board your experimental process. We discussed critical equipment, things that as brewers we really can't live without. We also discussed some of our favorite things, you know, that piece of equipment or that recipe that you absolutely fallen in love with and it's hands down the coolest thing you've ever picked up in the art of brewing. We also talked about explosions, critical failures, temperature ranges, things like that. Uh, we also discussed uh, bottles, types of bottles, things that while may not be period, definitely make the art of brewing a whole lot easier. We talked about the recipes we keep making, the ones that have always been our personal favorites or favorites of people within the SCA. We've also discussed the recipes we'll never discuss again. That thing that you tried that's just epic fail and you never want to try it again just because it was nasty or didn't behave the way you hoped it would. Our discussions lasted for almost two hours. Uh, lots and lots of great information. And I think everybody who was able to participate and attend was able to pick up a lot of good information that hopefully in future sessions we'll be able to continue to build on. Thank you for your time. Everyone have a pleasant day. Stay safe. Thank you, Owen. We turn now to Margaret Young to tell us about the Shut Up and Research class that was held on June 12th. Hello, this is Margaret Young. I debuted in the SCA officially at Step Sprightly, so most of you don't know me yet. I'm the brains behind Shut Up and Research, your persona, and I emceed the event. My partner, Gwilik, handled tech and her excellency Skaya provided her research expertise and recommendations for reliable historical sources. The event had seven participants, excluding the co-hosts, mostly from our dear Eldemir, but we had one from another kingdom. The event was held from 7 to 9.15. It went over time because people got talking about research, as they do. This event was a modification of Shut Up and Write a mutual accountability group that my classmates did when I was in the Masters of Critical Disability Studies at York. Shut Up and Research Your Personas had participants work on persona research in a structured group environment. The event began with introductions and what we wanted to work on during this time together. Some participants brought books they had meant to read, some were figuring out basic aspects of their persona and needed help honing their ideas. Uh, Her Excellency Skaya gave a short presentation on information literacy. Information literacy being the ability to find, critically evaluate, and apply the information we need 
for any particular project or topic. After that, we set a timer, turned off our mics, and started sifting the world's knowledge. We took a quick break halfway through to share our findings so far, then put our heads down for another half hour before a final chat. Thank you so much, Your Excellency Skaya, for tracking down articles, web links, and books to support everyone's efforts. I cut a to your expertise in the field of research. The hour seemed to pique people's motivation to research further, as well as revealing that many of us have shared topics of interest. Who knew? We will be creating a shared Google Doc with both what we found and what we're looking for. Better yet, people want to do this again. Keep an eye on the Kingdom calendar for a second shut up in research, popping up soon after the virtual Trillium War. Stay safe, everyone! Thank you, Margaret. June 13th saw Baron Brand host Eldemir Internet vs. Beer, also known as Moda Melee, which was held as a virtual event in celebration of Murder Melee in the Meadow. Attendance was large, with some people joining from Ohio and England. Baroness Lucia sent us this painting she created of Mistress Christinia, who is a paramedic and one of those on the front lines fighting COVID-19. As a public service announcement, we'd like to remind everyone that the application window for the Kingdom Exchequer position is closing at the end of this month. Please see the Eldemir website news section for details on how to apply. Now, as has become custom, it's time for Wolves of the Breed, wherein we talk with one of your fellow Eldemirians. <laughs> We're speaking with the Honorable Lord Joffrey Rodson from his farm of Carabrock. Good morning, Eldemir. Good morning, friends. Joffer, one of the things you are well known for is as an apiarist. Care to talk to us about bees? I could talk to you for several hours about bees. Bees are a wonderful insect. They bring us honey. They bring us wax. Uh, they bring us food. Actually, most of the food that you eat is something that a honeybee has a hand in creating. They're amazing pollinators. They're, oh, you probably have other questions. Go ahead. How long have you been keeping bees? So I've been keeping bees since I was about seven. My father learned the trade and from his father and started doing beekeeping. Uh, I got my very first hives when I was nine. We had a wild swarm uh, come in and take over two of our hives uh, while we were in Kingston and we quickly transported them out of the city because that was what the bylaws said to do at the time. And uh, I've been beekeeping ever since. I am currently 39 years old, so that technically means I've had bees for 30 years. Yeah, it's been a while. Do you utilize any period apiary practices? Funny you ask that question. Uh, plus ça change, plus ça même shows. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Uh, the act of keeping bees has changed over the years, but a lot of the techniques that we use date back to pre-medieval period. Uh, the, idea, the idea that you, if you smoke bees, they become more docile and they go do something different than attacking your face or using protective equipment like PPE in order to protect your head and face from being stung, this dates back to long before the medieval era. Um, of course, the products that we use of course, uh, to get honey out has changed over time. We use uncapping knives, that sort of thing. Whereas in period, they would typically kill their bees in order to get access to both the honey and the wax, which is why in period practice and in period records, you will see a lot more wax being produced than we currently do because the entirety of the hive gets used rather than only the, the products that we need uh, in, order to, uh, in order to effectuate actual honey sale or taking up wax or propolis as well. If people are interested in learning more about bees and beekeeping, where should they look? Well, if you're interested in bees and beekeeping, I would recommend that you reach out to a beekeeper either locally in your area or to myself or any of the other beekeepers that are in Eldemir. There are actually a number of us that uh, keep bees. I would uh, also attempt to educate yourself by uh, attending one of the many um, 
courses that are being held, or at least will be held next year, uh, for uh, uh, for introductory beekeeping. Those are run by a tech transfer program, uh, jointly run by uh, the University of Guelph and uh, the Ontario Beekeepers Association. Uh, I'm a member of at least the Ontario Beekeepers Association, a donor to the University of Guelph as well. It is incredibly important that if you are a beekeeper that you follow the rules that are currently out there. Um, for instance, keeping your bees well away from other homes. Uh, there's a, a set number of meters dependent on your area. And of course, there are also bylaws that you need to, to follow as well, local laws um, that you need to review and understand before you start keeping bees. And while you might think it's arduous and difficult, really, I only spend I, I, maybe two or three hours a weekend just keeping bees. And I have 15-ish hives, 10, 10, 15. Uh, at the peak of uh, my father and I's production, we had 93 hives. That was a little bit more work, but not as much as you might think. Thanks for speaking with us today. Thank you. And thank you very much for talking about bees. Uh, if you have any questions or if any of Eldemir has any questions, you can feel free to ask me or any of the, of the other beekeepers uh, that are in the society. Uh, as well, you can also tune into our YouTube channel, uh, Carebrock Farms. The link is either in the doobly-doo below or just coming up right here. Now we'll be hearing a song by Lady Widow Kate of the Lake. Strength and skill in battle made Britannicus a king. Grace and inspiration gentle Isabel did bring. Ere they ascend the lupine throne, bleak darkness filled the air. A plague befell the populace of mighty Eldormere. For the kingdom they would fight through the spring and summer wars. At least that is how it should have been and always was before. But the war they battled fierce would leave large and lasting holes on old and young and in between on hearts in minds in souls for the plague didn't care who it stole this is not what you prepared for but you're taking it in stride and you're leading all your people safely to the other side and our battleground's not littered for the enemies within but with patience and some humor we can face this with a grin and we'll win you lead us so we find a strength to battle each and every day to share a word of kindness and to ease another's way to offer of ourselves and help in any way we might while we revel where we can by some strange unearthly light to wait for the world to be right this is not what we prepared for but we're taking it in stride and you're leading all your people safely to the other side and our battleground's not littered for the enemies within but with patience and some humor we can face this with a grin and we'll win to hide goes hard against the grain in fear we now abide this battle from the sidelines it humbles all our pride but some among us venture forth and wade into the fray who brave this pe vicious pestilence in hand-to-hand -hand melee with no shield but a mask night or day this is not what they prepared for but they're taking it in stride and they're leading all your people safely to the other side and our battleground's not littered for the enemies within but with patience and some humor we can face this with a grin and we'll win 
And when this plague is o'er, and we've tallied up the score, we know that the grim reaper would have happily had more. And though this is a game, it's too close to days of yore. You've had to lead your kingdom like no monarch has before. So was sail to the plague, king and queen. This was not what you prepared for, but you're taking it in stride. And you're leading all your people safely to the other side. And this battleground's not littered for the enemies within. But with patience and some humor, we can face this with a grin and we'll win. This is not what you prepared for, but you're taking it in stride. And you're leading all your people safely to the other side. But this battleground's not littered for the enemies within. But with patience and some humor, we can face this with a grin and we'll win. And we'll win. We will win. Thank you. Bless Bless you. Thank you. For this episode's Artisan Spotlight, we're going to get an inside look at some period cooking by Emilo, as narrated by Lord Evan Crypton. Emilo of Calais likes to cook outside over charcoal fire when testing her recipe redactions. She finds that it helps her get a truer sense of the flavors and cooking time required for period dishes. Often period recipe books only give a list of ingredients and sometimes when to add those ingredients to the dish. But these texts were really created for professional cooks. Having the ability to try her own ideas of ingredient quantities and cooking times over the fire is extremely exciting. She has long been supported in these tests with equipment made or acquired by the Honorable Lord John Moran. They often work together to better the food available to their campmates at War of the Trillium. Here, Emilo is cooking on a 15th century reproduction brazier and gridiron made by John Moran. Emilo finds that having the period correct tools makes it a lot easier to understand the possible techniques used. She had this epiphany when she was able to cook with the historians at the Hampton Court Palace. Having the proper tools made all the difference. In terms of process, Emilo chooses recipes based on what sounds delicious and easy to find ingredients, especially if she's redacting for the masses. She uses her modern cooking experience to guide her in the potential quantities and flavors to make the dish. She often recreates the dish many times to get just the right taste. When deciding cooking length, often visual cues are used, as well as tasting the dish throughout the cooking. Once she is satisfied with the taste and consistency of the dish, she writes down her quantities and observations to create the redacted recipe. Emilo has found cooking exciting for a long time and even considered becoming a chef at Le Cordon Bleu cooking school. Cooking a period feast was how she found the SCA. She was head cook for her first ever event and she's never looked back. She cooked four seasonal pottages for her 2017 pentathlon entry and seems to have made period pottages her specialty. Emilo has had recipes in all five Royal Guild of Eldamirian Feast Cooks mm. calendars. This fish recipe will be in the 2021 Feast Cooks calendar. As a special how-to segment, Sir Elfwin is going to teach us about how to strap a shield. Hi, Eldamir, and welcome to my home. I wanted to talk a little bit today about how I strap my shields. First thing I want to talk about here is the center of balance on a shield, in particular on the uh, center grip styles. So at the top here we've got a standard round shield. Now if you think about it, it's symmetric in all directions. So if we just break that out, that's going to put the center of gravity in the center like that. While on a heater shield, it's symmetric left to right, but not top to bottom. 
So the center of gravity is going to end up um, roughly where the area of the top equals the area on the bottom, which will be in here somewhere. And that's pretty easy to, to find on your shield. Now why this is important, if you think of a flat shield like this, the weight of the shield is in line, so it's pulling down like that, but your wrist rotation is over here, and you can see there's a distance between these two, which will cause your shield to try and tilt forward. Now if you have a dished round, or a curved one, now that, sent, that mass is acting more through here, which is over your wrist. So that's going to make it less likely to table. So it's a pure choice between the two. Just be aware that this can affect how your uh, shield is going to balance. So I said it's pretty easy to find out where that balance point is. So I know it's symmetric this way, so it's going to be in the middle along here. It's how far down that balance point is going to be if I wanted to make this into a center grip. And just balance it. I mean, tweak it back and forth until you find where it's sitting. And now you know where it is if you want to put it in the middle. And if you want it to tilt one way or the other, then you move your grip up or down. So doing a strapped heater is a little more complicated. Um, what I'm looking for, my own philosophy on it, is I need to have my body in a position that's comfortable. Uh, the shield needs to be in its best protective position when I'm in that comfortable zone. If I'm not comfortable, I'm going to tend to move to where I am comfortable, and then that's going to move the shield out of position, and then I'm fighting with myself constantly bringing the shield back. So if I start in that comfortable position with the shield oriented on my arm to be in that defensive spot, then that's a whole lot less work for me to do uh, when I'm on the list field. There's less things for me to worry about. So the first thing I do is I kind of relax myself into my basic stance and I think, where does my arm want to be? Does it want to be here? Does it want to be here? Where is that comfortable spot? And it's a, for me, it's about here. Now, I then take my shield. Now this has already been strapped, so it already has the holes in it, but imagine a, a nice brand new blank. My hand's in its comfortable spot. Now where do I want the shield? Do I want it here? Do I want it here? And then I figure out roughly, okay, I want that to be here. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking around that corner. If that point is headed towards my opponent, I can look over the corner, I can look around the corner, and then if I move the shield to block, I'm not blinded. If I bring it across, I'm not blinded. Uh, so it's a good position. So then what I do, I just kind of mentally think, okay, that's where my hand is on the inside of the shield. And then I mark that. And I would really recommend if you have a brand new aluminum blank and you're figuring this out for the first time, make a wooden one and then drill all the holes in the wooden one. And then you can throw that away and rather than ruining your nice brand new aluminum one. But having figured out where I want my hand to be, I know I want it to be about there, and that gives me a location for my grip line. So we'll just put the bottom bolt here, not the top one, just the bottom one. Give that a little snug. So it's snug but not too tight. You want to be able to still be able to move the handle. So what I've got now is I've got just the bottom bolt in. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back to my basic stance. I'm going to say, here's my arm, it's comfortable. Where's the shield? And I'm like, well, that's too far point forward. That's a little flat. So that's about where I want it to be. And now I can take my Sharpie and I can mark where the top bolt goes. So the next thing you're going to have to figure out is where the strap goes. Now, something you're going to have to pay attention to is how your grip works. So what I've got here is my hand holding something at 90 degrees. And you can see that my smaller fingers aren't holding it properly. Now, if I go into a full grip, you can see I'm actually at about 60 degrees to, my, to the uh, line of my arm. So 
you can't just take where your grip on your shield is and draw a 90 degree line from it because it won't may not necessarily work for you. So you can figure out that angle and then transfer that to your shield. Okay, so now I've got my arm axis marked out on my shield. I know where my grip is. I need to figure out where the elbow strap goes or the arm strap goes. Now, for me, I don't want to put that right up in my elbow. That's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to dig in. I'll let it a little bit further ahead. I wear my arm harness. Uh, not every tournament you're in will allow you to swap out uh, if you lose your sword arm, crown for example, so it's a good habit to be in to fight with your arm harness on already. That way it's nothing new for you when you're in a tournament and you find yourself in that situation. I use leather. You can use seatbelt webbing. You want to use something pretty tough. If you use just the standard belt, uh, they're usually pretty decorative. They're cardboard inside, pretty flimsy, and they'll tear apart pretty quick. Uh, the other thing using a buckle style. Uh, again, I'd recommend that. You can, that allows you to adjust if you change your arm harness or you're loaning your shields to somebody else. If you're using a buckle, put the buckle at the bottom. If you put the buckle at the top, your loose part of the strap is going to be flopping around and it's, uh, it can be pretty distracting. What I like to do, put the arm harness on, put your arm on that axis, find a nice comfortable spot. Usually it's between the elbow cop and either the end of the van brace or the buckle on the van brace and that gives you a nice solid lock for that strap so you're not sliding around too much. It's also less uncomfortable. If it's sitting right on top of a buckle you can be uh, wearing on you and that can be painful sometimes. The other thing, uh, hand protection. If you're not fighting with a gauntlet or you've don't have uh, an integrated basket, one of those welded up systems. I use hockey face masks. They're, they're light, they're cheap, they're easy to get. Um, something I didn't mention at the beginning, when you're first placing your, your grip, make sure there's room for whatever basket you're using, because you don't want to end up your basket off the edge of the shield. So make sure that's uh, part of your placement from the get-go, and then I just bolt that on, and there's my hand protection. So thank you for joining me, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you, Sir Elfwood. For news of upcoming events, we now turn first to Mistress Kaja regarding the cooking in reenactment setting class scheduled for June 16th. Hi, Eldamir. Thank you to Colin and Torfina for inviting me on to Eldamir at Home to give you a brief teaser about a Zoom conference that will be coming up on Tuesday, the 16th at 7 p.m. I'm Mistress Kaja, and joining me on that conference will be Mistress Mordrith, Mistress Joan, and Mistress, Mistress Emma. And we are all also part of the Dark Ages Reenactment Company, also known as Dark. And since 1996, uh, numerous of us have been uh, continuing to do presentations in front of the public at different places, such as Lanso Meadows, Newfoundland. We would like to, to discuss on Tuesday night for all cooks and those interested in doing presentations, the interesting stories and difficulties and uh, tips and tricks about doing food in front of the public, whether it is cooking for yourselves or just for demonstration, or providing food as almost like a picture to show what uh, might have gone on in the Viking era. So we will be doing a roundtable discussion and we invite you to join us and have questions and comments and we will look forward to whatever discussion ends up happening. We have lots of things that we would like to talk to you and with you about. And so on Tuesday night, 7 p.m., uh, please join us. If you're not already part of the Cook's uh, Zoom conferences that have been going on and are interested in joining in for this one on Tuesday, don't hesitate to contact uh, Mistress Lucia Denzinas, uh, as I believe she is going to be hosting that for us, and uh, she will invite you to this as well. Thanks, Aldemir. We look forward to seeing you. Miss you all. Thank you, Mistress Kaja. Thank you. On June 19th, there will be a portrait artist paint-along. Mistress Lucia is here to tell us about it. Hey, Eldermere at Home. I just want to extend an invitation to all of you for Portrait Artist Painters Paint Along next Friday, June 19th. This is 
been a great dream of mine to sit in a coronation painting the royal family at just for spending the day doing that. However, I never felt good enough to bring my kit out. But after watching Portrait Artists of the Year, my favorite new favorite show, and their paint along Portrait Artists of the Week, I've been inspired to try new things and to just go for it. So our first paint along session, we are absolutely thrilled to have uh, Her Majesty Queen Isabel be our sitter. Um, the plan is to sit for two to four hours, depending on how long Isabella can uh, sit, with breaks, of course. And any media, uh, painting, sculpture, uh, paper mache, collage, any medium at all is welcome. It'll be a Zoom on the Eldermere Zoom account. And uh, it is uh, just a way of experimenting with a live sitter that uh, most of us never have the opportunity to do. So I hope you come out and join us. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me. And uh, I look forward to seeing anybody there. You don't have to be a member of the Northern Painters Guild. You don't have to be a member of the Oil Painting Support Group. Just anyone who wants to try to do a portrait in any medium or paint along in other ways. Um, I'll see you on June 19th. Thank you, Your Excellency. On June 25th, we have another cooking class, this one called Nose to Tails Cooking Pork. Please welcome Avalyn Canari and His Excellency Valder. Hello, Eldemir. My name is Avalyn. And I'm Valder. On June 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to talk about one of our favorite foods, pork. Specifically, pigs and how to use them from snout to tail. Come join us. You will find a link to the class on the Kingdom calendar. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Avalyn. Thank you. Thank you, Valder. The Big Gay Eldemirian Bardic Circle is scheduled for June 27th. Here's Gwilog and Margaret to tell us more about it. Choose to love something about him. Every day remember who I chose to be. Every evening choose to say the things that haven't yet been said. Then go to bed and choose to love the man I'm with. Well, wait, Gwillick. <laughs> You're not exactly a man. That doesn't fit. And neither are you, Margaret. We're both genderqueer. Even the songs I really love don't reflect who I am. Don't get me started on the ones about big Viking warrior dudes or the inspiration of delicate ladies. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually had music that really represented us? Actually, we do. It's not as easy to find, but it's out there. Shakespeare's sonnets written about other men are just the tip of the iceberg. Shakespeare was out of period. Well, so is Barrett's Privateers, and we hear about that at Bardic Circles all the time. Besides, didn't you know about the dozens of queer SEA songwriters out there? You mean I could sing something that I don't have to change the pronouns for? What about with other queer Skadians? Yeah. Oh my gosh, but well, I don't know if it's worth it. Are you sure it's worth holding a separate bardic circle for? Uh, yeah. When was the last time you heard a story or a song, especially in period, about the forbidden love between a king and his champion, or pirates who don't want your booty, just your gold, or Lady Dragon rescuing the princess from the evil prince trying to trap her in a marriage? Okay, I'm sold, but... What about my sis and my straight friends? I don't want to leave them out. 
they can perform too. It'll just be a fun challenge for them to find songs or stories with queer themes or about inclusivity and equality. It could even be about choosing your own family or personal transformations. And if squinting as you try to read between the lines or something queer isn't your thing, you're welcome to filk or write your own. Well, oh, what if their majesties don't approve, though? It couldn't be a kingdom event without them. They already do. They promise their support. They even want to attend. Wow. I already feel so much more like I belong. When should we do this? It should happen before Pride Month is over. Let's hold a bardic circle on Saturday, June 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Well, okay. What if I forget? Where can I find a link? It's on the LWR Kingdom calendar, and there's a Facebook event. Look for Big Gay Eldamirian Bardic Circle. Thank you so much, Margaret. I'm really looking forward to this now. I really hope that all of Eldamir comes with us. Love you too, Gwilik. Thank you, Margaret and Gwilik. Thank you. To keep up to date on upcoming events, make sure you check out the Kingdom Calendar on the Kingdom website. If you would like to appear as a guest on a future episode, or have a video you'd like to submit for possible inclusion, you can email us at the address on the screen. Remember, Eldemir at Home is moving to a bi-monthly schedule, so we'll see you in a couple weeks. That's a wrap for this episode. Take a look at the video description for links relating to this episode's stories. Until next time, stay safe, Eldemir. We'll see you at home.